Hi, everybody. Richard Tromans here again, Artificial Lawyer TV. Uh, today, we're doing another product walkthrough. Uh, this time, it's uh, Describe, which is, well, I'll let Richard DeBona, who is the CTO and co-founder of the company, tell us a little bit more. Richard, could you just tell us what is Describe and maybe just a little bit, very briefly, about the tech stack? Yeah. Hi, Richard. Great first name, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> Describe.ai is a way for people to get access to the law and we're helping access to justice. So basically what we've done is made it so that you don't need some expensive search engine or unreliable Google searches to, to research the law. So you could type in anything you want into our search engine and we will instantly return relevant judicial opinions based uh, from our big database. This is numbers actually higher. It says 2.8 million on our screen, but we're actually closer to 3 million. We've summarized all of the judicial opinions from every state and appellate, um, state appellate and Supreme Court. And also we are nearly done with federal district and appellate courts. And we have the complete federal Supreme Court back to like 1760 when it started. Well, so, and of course, we're talking about the United States here. The United States, States sorry, I should clarify. Canada, the UK, et cetera. Yeah, it's just the United States right now. I mean, um, our technology could be applied to anywhere. So we've been approached by like Australia and Uganda and India because uh, I guess they're English speaking to look into summarizing their case law, but our to-do list is, you know, an arm's length long. So. That might be down the road a bit, but uh, it could be it could be easily applied. Um, and and, and well, I was going to ask you one other question before we go sure. into the actual demo. The, the you're using OpenAI um, as as the you might say the engine behind this. Could you just talk briefly about that? Yeah, sure. So what we did was um, prior to this tool, actually. Um, several years ago, there was no way for people to get at case law. It was all hidden in the, there's a couple big search engines in the U S couple big legal companies that control all the data. And so a few years ago, Harvard, I guess they have like 40,000, uh, law books on their shelves and they were approached by this startup about getting their case law out into the world. So they t undertook this task of uh, scanning all of their all of their um, volumes, and that was called the Case Law Project at Harvard. And it took them a few years, and they got them all scanned. And at the same time, that they uh, were working with another company called the Free Law Project, who are out in Oakland. In Oakland worked with Harvard to take in their, their scanned things, but they also wrote all these scrapers for all of the different courts in the country because judicial opinions in the law are supposed to be kind of open source and out there, but they were, again, the courts made it hard to, to look it up. You could see things one at a time or as you know, Richard. And uh, so these two projects made it, possible for tools like ours to exist. So we have a commercial agreement with this company called the Free Law Project and their product is Court Listener. And we have access to all the judicial opinions in the United States. And so what we did back to your original question is about 15 months ago, we started summarizing all of the judicial opinions using OpenAI. Back then it was called DaVinci like tur the Turbo 3.0 and 3.5 didn't even exist. So it was super expensive and small context windows and all that type of uh, stuff. But I started scanning in, or not scanning in, summarizing all of these these judicial opinions. And then I, I looked into some other parts of OpenAI, and there's one about embedding and vector searching and all that. Um, so that we can make them searchable. And so basically what we ended up with 
was this whole database of like 15 million judicial opinion excerpts because you chunk things up to search them and then uh, a way to semantically search for anything you want instantly and in a way that is completely understandable to anybody, not just lawyers. Gotcha. Well, we'll let hold that thought. We'll come back. Yeah, sure. There's some more Q&A. That's a really great introduction. So thank you for that. Let's sure. just show the, the viewers just a couple of examples. Do you want to, uh, I'll disappear for a little bit and just let you give a couple of examples to show people. Yeah, sure. So basically what you could do is you could search from our homepage. We've made it so you don't have to register. You don't have to give your email. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to pay. We just kind of want to get this tool out there and get some uh, market share and make it just give people an alternative who need this. I mean, it's it's picking up energy in in the access to justice, like the people who represent lower income or even middle income. I mean, in this country, you're entitled to a lawyer for criminal, but not for civil. So if you have a civil issue, you're kind of on your own. And that leaves a lot of people underrepresented and they try to do this stuff on their own and it just doesn't work out because a lot of them can't pay $600 an hour for a lawyer. So this is a good way to get started. So you could search from here or you could just go to our search now, which gives some different options. Um, so I'll just search for any, I'll just like, let's say my landlord kicked me out for no reason. This is and, and, and that's for any state. This or? is for it. I'm going to do for all the states. So we have them, and then we have federal appellate, federal district, and supreme. And we're going to break these down because this comprises this federal appellate and federal district comprise probably 180 courts. So um, one of the things is I'm going to break it down so you could choose which appellate or district court you want to search. And then I'll explain what these little sparkles are in a sec. But um. So you just basically type in a search term and this video is not going to be, be sped up. This is how fast it is. So you click search and it's instant. And so these are AI summaries of um, case law across the country. So this case involves a landlord tenant dispute over renovation construction work on a leased property. So you don't have to put in the exact terms it kind of figures out your concept. And this is part of the beauty of AI is the AI kind of can figure out that landlord kicked me out for no reason it has to do with landlord disputes, leases, all this. So it could find relevant case law, even though it doesn't, it's not a keyword search. Mm -hmm. So then, um, and can you, can you finesse it? So if, if you just go back up to the query, sure. Sure. So, so because obviously the, the the couple of responses there that's related to renovation construction. Could we say landlord kicked me out for no reason? Um, they claimed I had damaged the property. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, which seems a fairly reasonable. Yeah, that seems question. like yeah. yeah, that's a good way to narrow it down. So. So what um, happens if we do that? So what happens if we do that? So it seems to uh, seem to give the same one on the top. Oh, but this one sent a letter requesting them to contact to discuss plans to bring the rent current, but did not. Yeah, locks were changed. Tenants were locked out. Let me see. At least violations could fail. Yeah. Maintenance, so uh, maintenance issues. Yeah. yeah. So, and then what we could do is search, we could um, search by state. So I'm in Massachusetts. I mean, some of the big, the biggest case law in this country is Texas, Florida, and New York. Um, why don't I, why don't I do some New York cases? But you could basically, you could do anything. We have all of it. So if you're a lawyer in a certain state, so here is relevant um in new york and again this we used to have an artificial slowdown on this because it's so fast mm -hmm. i had it spin to look like it was doing something but mm -hmm. i got rid of that because people should get the results instantly 
The landlord was supposed to inspect and repair the tenant's apartment, but failed to do so. The tenant was evicted by the landlord and her belongings were removed. And so you could see, um, you could, you could read through this stuff. And then if you click the case name, you get the, the original stuff. This is the, an AI summary of the original opinion. So this is like cliff notes of the opinion. Mm -hmm. So anybody could read this mm -hmm. as you go through. And then down below is the original that everybody had to deal with before our tool existed. Mm -hmm. So you could see it's all in legalese and pretty dense and has some of them have all these, mm -hmm. all these citations and everything else that, that make it hard for, for general people to read, like, like, you know, you have to be a lawyer to understand some of this stuff, but in, uh, it's basically about access to the law and, and making the law available to more people. But a lot of lawyers do use it too. So we, it's kind of like a market of, um, non-lawyers who use it to solve their own issues. And then lawyers who, let's say somebody walks through the door and they say, somebody, um, fell on a crack in new pavement outside the store who's liable or something. Um, and they could type in something like that and, and kind of get an idea of where to start researching. Mm -hmm. Um, and then back to these sparkles, I'll, I'll, I'll do a different search. So, cause we, maybe we're getting sick of landlords. You could also search in other languages. You could put in any language you want up here and it, it does results in English, but that's the beauty of the AI also is that it could understand languages. With kind of a traditional model, maybe we'd have 50 or a hundred customers right now, but we would be just the slog of like trying to sell people and get them to trust a new AI company and enter in their information and tech support. So we decided just to kind of go old school internet 1.0 and get it out there as much as possible and and put it in front of people and then we have some ideas for things like we're we're working on like a citation checker you've you've seen about those lawyers who submit briefs that are completely with made up cases mm -hmm. so we have something in the works where you can run your brief through our tool and it'll not only tell you if it's a real citation but it'll give you a summary of the of the cases you cited to see like this is real and this is relevant so you could kind of take care of some of that and those might be a paid tier because those would be more for use by lawyers than like a pro se person mm -hmm. although pro se people do have to um submit briefs so maybe it will be useful for them too but those are kind of the uh, things we could do for paid tier and then there's another thing about checking how good case law is like shepherdizing and all that so an ai shepherdizer we're working on so things things like that that we can we can kind of get some of the features of the big guys in here and make kind of a lower cost yeah. alternative well let's face it you've got access to the data obviously not all data but yeah. a, a lot of data hopefully sufficient to be useful and you've got the tech behind it that enables you now Obviously, in the old days, you'd have had to have tagged every little document to make yeah. it searchable in a meaningful way. Obviously, you know, the search, I think there's room for some improvement. I think that's fair to say. But you're getting very good results straight away, which is amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's great. Um, and I think just really, the, you know, the, the, the last thing really is um, as as OpenAI's suite of LLMs grows and improves and we get to, you know, GPT-5 and so forth, I mean, do you, do you see this just becoming really, you know, a, a even better tool? Yeah, I mean, that's when we could do some of this stuff of like going in and telling, we, we did some, oh, the dog's like scratching a pillow. We did some... Um, these, the abstracts that we talked about, that's some um, turbo 3.5 level analysis of cases where you tell it how to go in and analyze. But then once GPT-4 gets a little cheaper, we have some things that we want to do where to have it go in and actually deeply analyze a case as a whole and, and tell us 
more about it and tell us about um, references to other cases and 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 do things that had to be done manually for years. Mm. Fascinating, fascinating. Well, I'm sure that Thomson Reuters and LexisNexis are uh, going to be wondering. <laughs> uh, well, the because it, it's I, I literally did a one very similar to this last week, but in the UK. Um, uh, as a guy um, who has a company called Case Snappy, uh, okay. check it out. It's on artificial lawyer. You might find it interesting. You guys maybe should join up. You you have a lot a lot of interesting uh, synergies, perhaps. Uh, but it's been a real pleasure. Uh, it's really interesting. That's all we've got time for now. But I'll just say thank you very much, Richard, and uh, and good luck. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.